Well, I remember Howard was, the first thing that Howard said when he introduced his wife was, this is not my daughter, <laughs> because his wife had had some work done and looked very young. That was our first uh, glimpse of Howard. Howard Schnellenberger, um, I did his coaches shows, really difficult to do them. There were times we didn't know his players' names, uh, wanted to talk too much about the Miami past. I loved Howard Schnellenberger. I never went to a press conference, never went to a practice, never went anywhere where Howard was that he didn't give me a story. Always willing to talk about old times or talk football. That's what I liked best about him. He'd talk football. Coaches today act like they're Garden State secrets, even on the most mundane items. But Howard, he liked to talk football. He liked to talk about why you, why you throw a pass on first and goal from the six. And then why, if it's incomplete, why you run off tackle. I mean, he, he would talk about those things. And then he'd tell you old war stories about Joe Namath or Blanton Collier or Don Shula. I just thought, I thought it was great having Howard around. He didn't have any business being around. It was a disaster for him to be the coach at Oklahoma. Silly, silly decision by Donnie Duncan. But I sure liked having him here. Dave, when he was hired, Donnie Duncan, the athletic director, promised OU a big name. Well, he had, he had based everything on hiring Matt Brown. When Matt Brown turned him down, uh, there was panic. Uh, and there was Stellenberger. He had won a national championship. I often wonder if Osborne kicks the extra point in the title game uh, when Nebraska beat him, uh, played him in 83, if Stellenberger would have been coaching because he wouldn't have won the national championship. So, all around, just a, a, a bad thing. He truly is a coach. He's an old ball coach, without question. He loves it. And, uh, you know, in spite of your surprise that, that he's still, you know, battling rebuilding a program from a small or actually a start situation in a team that's now competing against teams like Oklahoma State and others, uh, you, you would wonder a guy that's been in it as long as he has and enjoyed the success that he has would want to fight that battle. But, again, he's a ball coach, and that's what he loves. That's what he does. And it's obviously, I think, showing, uh, showing up in Atlantic success. He was a, a fellow that obviously was proud of his past, as rightly he should have been. But uh, the thing that he did not do that I think Coach Stoops has done so well, he did not embrace the OU tradition. He fought it, fought against it. And I did his TV show with him, and he really didn't want you to bring up anything about the past. He wanted his own uh, legacy. And I, I think that went against the Sooner Nation, quote, unquote, because uh, I think that, that was a bad mistake he made. So he sort of got off on the wrong foot. Was not a fit. Well, I, and I, I kind of thought from day one, when he came here, that he wasn't a fit. If, if David Bora didn't make the move to get rid of him, uh, this program would have been a disaster. He, he was a very different type of person. He was very friendly, but when he finally did resign, I, I couldn't get an interview with him. So. Uh, Never did really click as one of his buddies. It was quite a change for me. It was obvious that Coach Snellenberger had, uh, you know, had a powerful sense of direction uh, as far as uh, you know what he wanted to do with the program, what he wanted to do with the, the team, and uh, was tremendously organized. The most organized coach I think I've ever worked for from the standpoint of punctuality at meetings, uh, coming in with an agenda and a schedule, getting on it, getting the meeting over with. His meetings didn't last long because he came in with a, uh, an agenda and a script to follow and everybody uh, better be there on time. <laughs> he, he was a stickler for that. I learned that pretty quickly. It was probably, it was, it wasn't probably, it was the most difficult coach I had to deal with uh, at Oklahoma. He's done a great job at Florida Atlantic. Obviously, he's built that program from zero. Uh, a, a typical remark by him when he took over the athletic director job at Florida Atlantic to set up a football program, he said, I'm going to search the country over to find the best coach for this program. And guess who the best coach was? Him. <laughs> So he's coaching him, uh, and uh, that just shows he has great confidence in his program, and that's that's fine. That's what you have to have, I guess. 
He's 73 years old, and he's still coaching. He's going to try to beat Oklahoma State on Saturday night. I mean, this is a guy that was signed by Bear Bryant in 1952. This is a guy that recruited Joe Namath to Alabama in 1961. This is a guy that was part of the Dolphins staff when they went 17-0 uh, in 1972. This is a guy that won the national title with the uh, Hurricanes in 1983. This is a guy that took Louisville to the Fiesta Bowl in 1991. And 73 years old and still down there in Florida trying to, trying to win college football games. Kind of interesting that he's played Oklahoma State because I will never forget an Oklahoma State coach who I'll, I will let remain nameless for the time told me that the Oklahoma State coach staff had a theory then. Every year that Schnellenberg was at OU, it would set the OU program back three years. I, I was told, since I'm not a coach, I was told that the offense he put in OU was the same one he had run years earlier, and every coach in the country knew the offense backward and forward, so his offense didn't work anymore. Oh, yeah. It had passed him by. I just think there were so many things that didn't quite work out for, for Howard. I don't want to be discourteous, he was, uh, but he was trying to build his own, and the main problem was he would do away with, he didn't even want to talk about the, the past. And one thing John Blake did that bothered me, he at least brought some good players in. Again, give David Bourne a lot of credit for erasing the mistake. I never ever would have thought when Schnellenberg is here, low points program, that this program be back where he is right now. Whatever happened here, he's a good football coach. I don't think there's any doubt about it. It was a bad fit here, but there's no doubt in my mind that Howard Schnellenberger knows football.